Beginning in Exodus, the second book of the Bible, horses are mentioned frequently in the context of war. At first, horses and chariots are the terrifying tools of the enemies of Israel, Pharaoh's chariots and the deadly iron chariotry of the Philistines, for example. In those early days of Israel as a nation, they themselves did not possess a chariotry. But as the time of the kings of Israel unfolded, horsemanship and chariot warfare became a primary goal. By the third king, Solomon, we see Israel buying horses in bulk, building chariot cities, and organizing a centralized feeding system for the nation's horses. A few generations later, during the reign of King Ahab, two enemy nations would record on documents that still survive Ahab and Israel's unusually powerful chariot force. The Tel Dan Stella says that Ahab brought 2,000 chariots to battle, which would represent anywhere from four to 6,000 chariot horses. This seems to confirm an Assyrian record that claims Ahab brought the strongest chariot force to the Battle of Karkar, again numbering 2,000 chariots. Scholar and modern horse professional Deborah O'Daniel Cantrell has argued for a modern misunderstanding of the archaeological evidence for horses and chariotry in ancient Israel, largely based off a misunderstanding of the needs and training regimes of horses. Her work points to the city of Megiddo as an exemplar of a chariot city, showing convincing evidence for horse stabling, including horse chewing marks on remaining feeding troughs as well as interpreting Israel's four and six chambered gates as chariot hitching stations. Chariot horses were a most feared weapon. They were trained to kill by trampling, and in the words of Cantrell, they were trained to be addicted to speed, which is what made them both a fearsome weapon and difficult to control in the heat of battle. Horses were also very difficult to kill, with spear, arrow, and sword wounds exciting them further and with their circulatory system allowing their drivers hours to get them back to camp to deal with what could have been deadly wounds. Horses' main weakness, on the other hand, is their stamina. Horses' exhaustion levels need to be strictly controlled by their drivers, otherwise they would work themselves to death. This meant that to battle successfully, a chariotry would need to have waves of chariots that would fight and retreat to camp for rest. Another weakness is the horse's startle reflex, which could send an excited war horse on an uncontrolled, deadly flight. History seems to show that enemy armies were always trying new tactics to startle enemy horses while desensitizing their own horses to the same stimuli. There were parts of the war horse's apparel that did help with this. Horses wore blinders to limit their vision by up to 90%, and multiple bells were incorporated onto their gear. This could have multiple benefits, helping horses match each other's gaits, announcing their presence, and creating a comforting white noise for the horses. Whether we think of the heavenly horses that accompanied Elijah to heaven, the fearsome chariot driver King Jehu, or the war horses of Revelation, it's clear that horses were tremendously important in the history of Israel. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this spotlight, please like it, share it with a friend, and leave us a comment below on what you thought. Also, don't forget to click the bell and subscribe for the latest Bible discovery content.